Hmm, can my modular house system be expanded even further and be used for castles? Hello and welcome to the Battle in Barra and another crafty crafting video. Uh, yeah, I've been making modular houses and expanding upon the concept, but now I want to see if it can be used for other types of buildings. Um, in time, maybe a full castle, but for now I'm going to start small and just build a tower. Uh, a square tower, and I'm going to attempt a um, circular stairwell to uh, add to it, so it's going to be two bits of modularity in one. Uh, again, this is for Night's Dark Terrace, what sparked this for the uh, Shuliskin farmstead. It has a uh, house that I've built in previous video, and it, but on one side of it, there's a tower and a spiral staircase on it. So it's going to be for that, aim for that. But with a few that in the future, I want to expand it to uh, be a full castle, the concept to be a full castle. In this, I'm using her start blocks. I did a video a while back, a few years back now using her start blocks and I was never very happy with it. So I'm going to try in this video to see if I can redeem myself. Spoilers, still not very happy with them. Uh, the reason I'm using her start blocks is for the curved spiral wall. Um, if I had access to thick two inch foam, I would just make it out of that. I just love that stuff, but I don't. But I might try and see if I can track some down and revisit this again in the future. So I'm using her start blocks. Uh, it's different, it'd be something different for you to watch, but I'd recommend probably just making it out of uh, foam. Uh, uh, anyway, enough of me being disappointed with myself. Let's get crafting. So we've actually got to get cast in the her start blocks. Um, before we get going, I am missing a mold. I'm missing a mold that would make these pieces for me, which is uh, a circular disc and a step, and you use these to make the stairs and the rounded window. Um, luckily, I have enough of these uh, for what I intend to do, and almost enough of these. But then later on, I'll just show you perhaps how to fake it a little bit, how to make your own if you don't have the molds. Also, um, that mold also contained the circular piece I needed and some little bits but I have this mold which does have the same size circle and these bits uh, but only has one of them uh, so it's going to take a good while to get cast in luckily again I already had some of these pre-made so not too bad so I'm going to concentrate on the um, molds in question I have a standard block one here and this is the mold I forget the number I'll put it in text here but it used to made prison project I think it's actually called the prison mold and this will give me all the rest of the details I need I'm using uh, Herculite 2 plaster which is uh, slightly stronger than plaster of Paris to mix it up you had the plaster to water so I use an old spread tub for to add the water in I have a uh, container here that I use to measure the water. Uh, it's trial and error really on the amounts I want to make, but it's roughly two bits of this to one bit of this. They say like um, 100 grams of plaster to 42 mil of water. So it's just slightly more than a half ratio. But for what I've done, it's just trial and error. Each time I tried it, I filled up a beaker of water, took note of how much I filled up and for what I wanted to cast out of this. And then I've just put a pen mark here so I can just quickly fill up all the time. So I add the water in, I have a spoon here for the plaster. I've worked out it's roughly uh, three big scoops of plaster to that amount of water. Separate spoon here to mix it up. And what you want is a uh, somewhat thick consistency. Like if you're if you're a cook, you're making some sort of pancake batter, I guess. Consistency. And then I shall 
use the spoon to help me pour it where I want it, want it to go. Uh, I start off with the smaller fiddle a bit first. I want that. Uh, I don't want one of these bits. Just roughly working out what I want. Uh, you can sort of tap out. If you tap around it, bang around it. Sorry about this on the mic, of course. But tap around it. I uh, had to get rid of any air bubbles. You can also uh, pick it up and lightly drop it. And you see you're getting rid of air bubbles. And then come in with a bit of card and just use it to even it out and so you get a nice so I'm going to build the first layer of the tower and this will be the one with the internal door which will be here. Um, I think the way I'm going to have to do this just to speed things up is just to, I'll build the layer and then we'll go over what blocks we have and how I've arranged them. So this has four corner blocks and they are arranged like so. Uh, so we have one here, so each time you have a pattern on the outside, just so you know. A pattern, a pattern, this side was blank. So by doing this, we have a pattern here, a pattern here, and it will leave us two uh, inches here for the door. So that's where the door will go actually. The door's made from these pieces. They will sit here like so. And then the door, of course, will have these pieces here on either side. Complete it. And this will give us an overview of a size of four and a half inches. From outer to outer, and the internal space is three and a half inches, so just under four inches, which is not too bad for a tower. So, I will be using a combination of set squares and other right angle pieces to make sure it's straight, and I shall glue these together using PVA. It's a stick up. I'm also going to use this tile to build it on because uh, it's nice and flat and level and plus it means whilst it's drying I can remove it from my desk and carry on with something else, perhaps building another layer on another tile. But for now, I'm going to get gluing. See you on the next layer. Before we get gluing actually, uh, it's well worth building up without glue, just building up all the different layers. Um, just so you can get an idea of how many blocks you're actually going to need to cast and what how it's all going to fit together. So now I've done this, I can take it off layer by layer, put the layers here, so to speak, and that's so I can quickly come back and assemble them later on. So I can do this. So okay, what do we have going on here? We have four corner pieces in here and then in between the four corner pieces we have three normal blocks. I've just put the two doorway pieces here just to help keep them separated. Um, so this one actually only has one normal block and the two doorway pieces. Uh, so we'll go on to the next layer. One thing to note on the next layer up is the corner blocks will have to be flipped upside down. Uh, so the pattern is on this side and this side on all of them otherwise if you put it the right way up you're going to hit that blank pattern so just something to uh... so what do we have going on with this layer we have a uh, half block half normal block here corner block three normal blocks corner block three normal blocks corner block three normal blocks corner block and a half normal block here which is giving us our doorway on the third layer, we have a window. Uh, the windows are like a third of a block. So if we have a block, see they're like a third, and they have a gap in between. So what we have to do here, before we uh, place our next block, 
you need to make sure we leave enough room for the window. Now, theoretically, it should just be as easy as just placing them at the other end, but just a sanity check. You can place the block on top. See that there's a gap there. Okay, everything's in place. Corner piece. These are now all the right way up. Normal block, a third of a block. Normal block, corner piece. Normal block, third. Normal corner. Normal third. Normal corner. And normal. Now we're going to move on to the full flat. And one thing to note, just in case I forget, is our windows. That will be here, here, and here. We are not going to glue these in. These will be glued to the bottom of uh, an above layer. And this will act as a little locking mechanism. So just one thing to note when I'm talking about them. And that's the next layer done. Uh, we have a half block, half normal block, corner block flipped upside down again. Normal block, window not glued in, so I can remove it. We have a quarter piece, that's the smallest piece here. Normal block, corner upside down, normal window, again, not glued in. A quarter, normal, upside down corner, normal window, not glued in, quarter, normal, corner, and end block. And what I'm gonna do now is glue the door in. Onto a normal level of the tower. This is pretty much the same, just without the door. So for this, I've got four corner pieces for the first row of bricks, four corner pieces and uh, 12 normal bricks, pretty much like last time. I'll glue these in and we'll go over all of the layers and I'll let you know what blocks I used. The second layer is much the same as the first layer, four corner pieces and 12 normal blocks, just all a uh, different sort of uh, offset uh, as walls are want to do and like with the door section this layer has the corner pieces flipped over. The next layer is the window layer and I'm building this assuming the doorway is here because these block order needs to be the same as the um, door level just so when the windows lock in they'll all be in the same place so I'm assuming the doors this part here and it's always going to go in that order so each next if I build another level of this this layer has to go in this same order so the next level matches up the final layer top layer is uh, corner normal uh, quarter normal corner normal quarter normal corner normal quarter normal corner normal quarter and normal and a uh, corner even a uh, normal and corner and uh, once again the window pieces are not glued in and I'm going to straighten this up now it's a bit wonky and I shall uh, allow it to dry let's move on to the rounded uh, stairwells um, so for this going to need rounded blocks uh, this is how many you're going to need for each um, level of the floor so we will need 10 of these large curves six half curves two window pieces uh, eight stairs and four columns We're also going to need because we have a little returning wall at the end blocks of this nature so it's four long and eight short but we'll deal with that in a minute to begin with we are just going to put it together so like last time we can sort it out but for now what i'm going to do to get going is i'm going to assemble the stairs two steps at a time so put a bit of glue there uh, some on the ends there and uh, what you want to do is i may have gone wrong already on this yep which i have uh, you want to go around in a clockwise manner so like so 
because uh, traditionally stairs, uh, medieval stairs went round a clockwise manner because most people were right handed and it would put people climbing them at a disadvantage so I shall sort that out. So I'm doing just assembling them two steps at a time to allow those to dry for later on. The first level is just four long pieces. Next layer is two shorts at the end, two longs and I've put the window in which will go all the way to the top. Next long short and finally too long not gluing in the short pieces because they will be the bits that we glue to the underneath of the piece above to hold it in place so now the aforementioned walls straight walls where it's too small long too small long are just going to be glued into place on the end here like so and now it's time to let this dry on this note at this stage let me know if you think super glue would work for her style moulds and i'll try it I hate doing this or even hot glue because using PVA whilst when it dries it's super strong this stage here when you're putting it together it's so delicate so delicate it's now time to put a floor in here and due to my wonkiness of using the Hearst art blocks these are perfectly square unfortunately these way the easiest way I found to do this is just turn it upside down and put it onto a bit of foam. And come in with a pencil. So we put a little arrow there so I know the direction. And then Cut that out with a sharp craft knife. There might be some trimming and whatnot to be done, but if you're lucky, like I am here, you're fitting first time. Put a wood grain pattern onto it like the modular houses and glue it in place. It is now time to attach the uh, windows to the bottom of the piece above. Uh, normally extension bits would have four windows on but this bit and this bit are sort of unique in the sense that because we've got the door here there's not going to be a window on this one. Like this bit here but it will be here but i'll show, show, show you the technique anyway that i'm going to utilize uh, i'm going to work out roughly which way i want to be the front like so and what i'm going to do is use super glue on the window i know one one window at a time just to make it easier use super glue hopefully you can see what i'm going to be doing here put it on in place I want it and then just lift the window up to the uh, piece and then take it off and hold it in until it dries. Repeat that for each of the windows. Okay so I'm going to make a top uh, battlement area with uh, meticulations and crenellations and what have you. Um, so for this I've just made a piece that's uh, made exactly the same as how we've done it before. Except it's just two rows, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these third pieces on to the board. Move over to super glue for quickness for this, and that you can use super glue. So I wish I'd done that at the beginning of the video. So if you're planning to make something like this using Hearst Arts and Plaster, yeah, use super glue. I'm just going to glue these spaced out evenly. At this stage, almost done, I just want to add some detailing around here. I'm going to glue a row of these all around the second block here to get an overhang. And then underneath the articulation type thing, I'm going to have one of these in the center. The Hearst Art Mold Kit, just a little rigid piece. I'm going to go at each center articulation, like 
like so. So I'm going to do that. And if you really want to be on camera when I do this, I'm quite boring. I'm just going to glue them on. That is the plan. For the crenellation part of the circular tower, we have two long bits straight at the end and then four long bendy bits. Next layer is a third of a straight because this is where it will sit, make it sit in place nice and flush. Uh, a short bend, three long bend, short bend and a third. And then what we're going to do now is just add some crenellation at the top in much the same way as I have done before. Like so, and they'll go here, here, and with that, that's the, uh, the crenellation is done. Um, because I won't be able to add in the details like I've done to the front of the other one along here, because those pieces don't exist. I might revisit this in a future date and cut them out of foam, but for now, I'm going to leave it at this stage. So what I've done uh, now is I've um, covered it in black Mod Podge. This is uh, quite a good step for her start blocks as uh, her start plaster blocks when you plaster Paris is quite porous and Mod Podge being a sealant, it will seal them in to make the painting easier. It also help glue it together being it's a glue and fill in all the gaps in between where the mortar would be. And I'm now just in the process of uh, doing a heavy dry brush and over brush if you like of a mid gray. At this stage, the uh, wood area can be painted a brown. This is burnt umber brown. And now a dry brush of tan to really bring out the detail. That's sort of the whole point while we're using the Hearstar blocks. And the tan can also be dry brushed across the wood. And the final stage is a wash. This is my usual homemade wash, nothing special. Uh, dirty paint water, uh, black ink, and a bit of dishwasher soap just in there just to give it a bit of flow. And it was at this stage I realized I didn't like her start finish, so we're gonna address this again in the future in a different uh, video, but I definitely didn't like the paintwork. Um, I normally just do it my sort of walls or this grey but really I live near castles and none of them are this grey colour they're more a light tan beige colour as you can see from the pictures here so I'm going to repaint it I'm going to paint over it in burnt umber then I'm going to come in with this coastline tan and I am going to do a heavy dry brush with this And then in places, I'm going to come in with a lighter tan. This is called Ivory Tusk. And in certain places, splotches a uh, sort of really, really light grey come in. This is called Urban Grey. And I'm going to dry brush that in patches. And with this, I'm much more happy with the finish. Um, really happy with it, in fact. The actual paintwork, I'll probably paint a lot more of my castles in this colour. I may even revisit Rochester Castle and paint that. Um, I haven't uh, done a wash, I didn't think it needed it, but who knows, in the future I may come back to it. But that's it for this video. Um, as I said, I'm probably going to revisit the modular tower I've made out of foam at some point when I can get hold of it in the UK. I uh, want to take time to uh, thank you for watching this one, even though I'm not happy with it. <laughs> Until the next video where hopefully I will be happy with the uh, project in that one. Stay safe and take care.